Ever since the 2020 presidential election, I have been following the evangelical community very closely. It is the will of the Lord for President Trump to be reelected. We believe that this president shall be reelected. I prophesied that to you some years back. The Democrats are not going to win for decades to come. You're not going to see another Democrat in the White House for decades, I don't believe, if ever again right now at this point, because they are literally, you're seeing literally the, the destruction of the Democratic Party. Well, I guess that's what happens when you get your news from the McFiles. <laughs> I've covered their excuses in multiple videos. I'll put a playlist below, but the denial was next level, all the way up to Biden's inauguration. You can't tell me over hundred or thousands of prophetic voices, intercessors, believers all missed it. That's the first time in 33 years where I watched all, every prophet I know, every, and I know a lot of them, all of us have been in agreement. When has God ever said, I'll do it at your time or I'll do it when you want me to do it? There's still something that God can do that can work in, in, in a miracle. <laughs> If. But evangelicals weren't about to admit defeat. Surely they could pull some sort of a do-over. Good call. Jesus is the original time traveler. It ain't over till the fat lady sings. And the truth of the matter is, it's not over till God says it's over. The year is 2021. Biden's America has turned into a barren wasteland. Christians are hunted to the point of extinction. One man stands in the way. His name is Donald John Connor, I mean Trump. And God has called him back to the White House. One lone time traveling prophetess returns to the present to prepare the way. Do you know the way? Show me the way. Trump has legally won the election and he is the president of the United States for four more years. I was taken forward in time. I saw that happen. Justice will be given and Trump will be put in the White House for four more years. It may take a couple weeks. It can take a couple months. Well, but that was back in February. Let's go forward in time a few months to see what's actually happened since then. This moment in time, in reality, in legality, Donald J. Trump is our president right now. Well, there you have it. Except he wasn't. All of the prophecies had failed. It couldn't possibly be that they were false prophets, that prophecy is simply a guessing game of chance, that God doesn't get involved in politics, or that God's not a Republican. No, something bigger and far more nefarious was going on. One of the things that God is trying to tell us is to quit blaming. Don't blame the prophets, don't blame the people that didn't believe or whatever, because something has happened. We've been invaded. People say, well, we need to pray for the president. Yes, Donald Trump, pray for him. You can pray for the office of the president. You can pray for a man named Joe Biden, but you cannot pray for President Joe Biden because there's no such man. He doesn't exist and he knows he don't exist. Is this real life? Why is Hank Kuhneman standing? Because God has spoken to me. And you want to call me false, and yet I have stood, and I stand with God. I will stand with this loyalty, whether you think I'm false or not. If that's what you think, then you can take your opinion, and you can shove it. That right there needs to be a meme for like every time people are caught in some kind of a scandal, but doubled down instead of admitting their faults. You can take your opinion and you can shove it and you can shove it, shove it, shove it, shove it. You can take your opinion and you can shove it. Some opportunistic televangelists didn't so much as blink at the failed prophecy and continued fleecing their sheep every chance they got. Most notable among them, doomsday prepper Jim Baker, who used this chance to raise money for his Hall of the Prophets while interviewing Lance Wallnow, who falls prophesied Trump's election victory. The temple, I call it the temple, 
got our our new studio. <laughs> yes, our hollow. It looks like a temple. The studio is being built, mm-hmm. and we need the funds to, to build it. People like Lance Walnow will be invited to come here and televise from here to the world. It's for the last days prophetic word. For $500 donation, you're sowing that seed to help us, but we want to send you a gift in return. We want to send you one of the PTL Voice of the Prophets mugs, Mm -hmm. along with one of the PTL Voice of the Prophets blankets. $500 for a mug and a blanket? (laughs) <laughs> but when you join that $1,000 club, you're going to receive two of the PTL Voice of the Prophets mugs, mm-hmm. along with two of the PTL Voice of the Prophets blankets. Mm-hmm. They don't even have bulk pricing? But wait, there's more. We'll be pre- putting your prayer request That's in right. the cement and just praying over them. That's right. For the small price of $1,000, your prayer request will be buried in the ground. This is worthless. But not everyone bought the prophetic narrative. Even some prophets had already backed down, and some prominent evangelicals grew tired of holding the line. Ministers are busy obsessing over a woman with pink hair who refuses to recant her prophecy that Trump will be in office. You know, prophets lose their own credibility with rational people after a while they have to recognize that they missed it. Immediately, these heretics faced extreme backlash and even death threats for not sticking to the narrative. No one should bash a prophet. You know what it says in the Bible about not touching his anointed. So just let me give you a heads up. That's wrong. Don't bash the prophets. Hello. Under pressure, some of the weaker among them waffled back. God isn't finished with America and God isn't even finished with Donald Trump. I think people think he's out of office, he, you know, new president. But what if God has an anointing on Donald Trump to be Cyrus and there's a illegal counterfeit in office? We're going to have to acknowledge the counterfeit because that's what we got to do. Meanwhile, the kingdom is divided because the real anointing is on still on Donald Trump. And God, as far as I'm concerned, hasn't released him from being a wrecking ball. So if you remove him by illegal means, you can have the position, but you don't have an anointing for that. What? As the wise man once said, Prophets lose their own credibility with rational people. After a while, they have to recognize that they missed it. But the people's backlash made sense. How could anyone abandon their cult leader, I mean their messiah? By this point, they had pretty much turned Trump into a demigod. People say, well, do you still think President Trump might become president again? I do, because I I, I prayed about it, and God said it's about the mantle, the mantle of anointing which is on President Trump, not Biden. Justice will be served, says your God. Nothing will stop me from my plan at putting my son, Donald Trump, back in that White House. This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. President Trump is anointed and appointed by God, and he's not going anywhere. He's not going to be impeached. He's not going to be removed from office. He will be there for two terms, period. I am a golden god! With unbridled faith in their Messiah, they began seeding their congregations with thoughts of overthrowing the government. The military will take control temporarily until order is restored. Don't mess with us, uh, Satan. Don't mess with us corrupt political uh, regimes. Don't mess with God's people like that because I'm going to tell you something. If you mess with us, we'll call him back for three terms. Don't mess with us. You said it, man. Nobody f***s with the Jesus. And remember, these are the same evangelicals who promoted the January 6th storming of the U.S. Capitol. On January the 6th, it's going to be wild. You can go to wildprotest.org or jerichomarch.org and you can register. If you're watching or in this room and you can make it to D.C., I encourage you 
to go. You go. We're sending a big group of people up there again this time. Go. Go, go, go. Across the nation, you'll hear people referring to this as the new 1776. 1776. We're headed towards conflict and war, and we need to prepare for it. And the Lord showed me in this dream that he had seeded our whole country with a provision to defeat this onslaught. In that dream, I saw militias popping up like mushrooms all over the country. The seeds that he had sown throughout our country to defeat it were the veterans of the Afghan and Iraqi wars who knew how to fight urban warfare and everything else, but they would be the provision. Unlike democracy, that's called a military coup. These are truly dangerous fantasies, and while most Christians and even some evangelicals don't partake, these violent delights do have violent ends. But sometimes, a simple shred of doubt is all that it takes to dissuade one extremist away from the precipice over which dogma would otherwise plunge them. Which is why I expose these false prophets, these radical televangelists, and the charade that they pull. Because only glimmers of truth can lead you out of the cave of extremism. If you want to support my work, you can make a per video pledge on patreon.com slash holy kool aid or make a one time donation on PayPal. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, and as always, dare to be curious, but don't drink the Kool Aid. We will be rejoicing in the streets by March, April, uh, uh, uh. May, June. There's going to be an amazing turnaround. You just watch what happens. I'm going down with the ship on this. The Lord showed me this.